also pre-turning up the sound for the... I didn't move my mic. I can't reach like you have it set up. You know, I was going to tell you. Welcome, everybody. I was going to tell you, I got uh, shorty booms. So you don't have to lean so, so I can far put it forward. Yeah. So we might... We Are might they coming? No, or they're you here. Have them? They're here. Oh. I found them. All right. In the whole garage reorganizational that we did last weekend. Welcome to the um, just gonna no. What, <laughs> what, what day are we on? We're on um, we're on Thursday, so we're on our live Q and A, our guitar Q and A hangout. You're gonna have to deal with us tonight because this whole nothing's wrong with me yet. Nothing's wrong with me. <clears throat> well, I, I'm I'm still struggling a little bit here uh, with this cold, but you know it's cool. We're we're doing it. We're doing the thing, and um, we've got a bunch of questions that came in from Patreon and from YouTube, and they are. Uh, we also have some off-topic questions for after the nine o'clock mm -hmm. hour. Um, I did text Don, and I think he is able to watch for a little while. So maybe we should do this right now because he might be able to see us at the very beginning. He didn't text me again. And also because, you know, I have a cold and because this will help. So uh, before we get into our live stream tonight, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Because we're not live. Oh, because we're already, yeah. Well, you know, anyways. Um, first of all, put this first picture up right here. This is a new t-shirt. Um, because it's a snake. It's actually kind of a dragon, but it's kind of a snake. Snake with wings? Yes. Uh, because I have a snake. Um, also because I have been like on this whole, um, I've been thinking about like nostalgic skateboardy Pal Peralta, Steve Caballero kind of stuff. And that's where this shirt came from for me. So, uh, Bones Brigade, like, if you know, you know. So, if you want this shirt, it is available. Now, the question I have for you, Brianna actually brought this up to me the other day. She's in the comments. This shirt has the graphic on the back instead of on the front. Do you want our shirts with the graphic on the back, or do you want them with them on the front? Or... Does it matter or do certain kinds need to be on the front and certain kinds need to be on the back? I need to know these things because I want you to be able to buy these shirts and really like having them and wearing them. So um, anyway, this is the new shirt. It's available on the website. There's a link in the description. So does that mean it's on the back? This one is on the back. Is there anything on the front? No. Hmm. There is a Dylan on the, on the arm. Hmm. Like we've been doing the Dylan on the arm. I mean, my personal preference is if it's full graphic on the back, it should have something on the front. So what? A plain shirt is weird. So maybe we should put um, a little chest decal on the front. I would, but okay. Well, I can will change. You it. Ask them what they want. We can. We could do that. We could put something a little chest logo on the front. I'll I'll work on that, and we will switch that shirt. We will make it. We will make it so. Anyway, there you go. That's cool. Marsha uh, Murray says I prefer front. Okay, well, most of them have them on the front. So maybe I'll do a couple of each and people will be stoked with either way. <clears throat> All right. Um, the other thing is uh, we are done with that. The other thing is we have a couple of new uh, limited edition pickups on the website. Um, we have a 12-hole DAF and we have our full-size humbucker-sized Filtertron that is on the website. We have a couple of each left. So just so you know. You can order those right now as well. And despite the illness, we have been keeping up pretty well. So don't worry about being super behind on stuff. Pit guards have were a little crazy, but we're mostly caught up on all that too. So, And anybody that's got a pit guard on order, I think the parts for them come tomorrow. So we'll be knocking those out probably tomorrow afternoon and Monday. So we will be pretty caught up on that stuff. Um, and then the other thing is a, a few weeks ago, um, 
I'll just say, Don sent me some money and said, buy something nice for your bar. And so I keep for, I had kept forgetting to go to the liquor store and buy something nice. And so I did it today. And my throat still bothered me a little bit. Normally, I would get, get I got two somethings nice. I got a bottle of Jefferson's Ocean. And then I also got what I'm about to show you. And we're going to go ahead and open it now because I think he's watching. Um, and I think he's really busy tonight and might not be able to watch the whole time. And then the other th thing is, because my throat is the way it is, I got tequila this time. Is that a and metal it box? comes in this big metal box. Yeah. It's this um, Gran Coromino. And this is also, the other reason I got this is because this is something that I believe one of our viewers a long time ago had recommended to us to try. Um, and so we are going to just pull this out of the box right now. And maybe as I do this, we can start on our Patreon questions. Well, now I want to know what the bottle looks like. Oh, apparently the bottle is beautiful. So see, the the metal is twisted. Oh yeah, I see it. See that? So it's not deformed, it's supposed to no, look like that? No, it's supposed to be like that because the bottle Whoa. is twisted. And it comes, <clears throat> well, it's in there, on a little base. Yeah, this bottle is beautiful. I was told at the store that this bottle is beautiful. So anyway, so as we do this, okay. we'll, we'll go ahead and I can get started. Going. Yeah, let's keep, let's let's get started. We don't want to keep the folks waiting too long. Rob says hello, Leslie and Dylan. Hope you all are feeling better. I am beginning to think of an upgrade. I'm beginning to think of upgrade options for my daughter's pink strat with the Hello Kitty sticker. If I go with a single, single hum configuration, there isn't enough room for Kitty on the pick guard. I could, of course, move Kitty to the guitar's body. Another option is to go with a hum hum strat and put Kitty on the pick guard between the humbuckers. Thoughts? Yeah, so first of all, I think that if you um, single single hum is my favorite thing of all time when it comes to like multiple pickups in a guitar. Here's the thing though. I was thinking about this with respect to upgrading uh, not a beginner player, but maybe it's a it's a beginner guitar, but maybe they're next leveling it kind of. Um, Don't put so much stuff on the guitar that you give them option paralysis. Um, so if it's a single, single hum, just put a five-way switch in it and it'll give them a bunch of options and a bunch of different sounds. You know, you'll get your humbucker and you'll get your single coils. I really like that idea. Two humbuckers is cool, but don't put coil splits and don't put all kinds of stuff like that in it. Just keep it very simple. Um, I think overcomplicating a guitar in general for most people, not just a beginner, but for most people is, is a bad idea. But I also think that especially for somebody who you're trying to um, encourage in the hobby, uh, you don't want to over overcomplicate it. Oh, wow. It's dark. It's like a weird... Well, it's the, the shape of the bottle is weird. You can try it first. Oh, that is dark. <clears throat> uh, that's not going to work. Um, can you put this over there by the horn? Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking about, I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, we we'll just leave it right there, actually. I've been thinking about this a lot. The whole... Um, beginner or next level thing. I want to do a video again. This comes from fountain pen land because there's all these videos about, uh, the next level fountain. Like 
there's everybody knows the beginner entry level everything, right? Like squires and whatever. But if you want to make the next step, what is that without over committing, without like going down a rabbit hole, but just wanting to take the next step? And I'm, I've been thinking about that a lot. And I want to do a video about that because there's a lot that we can do as guitar players that we, we who already play to encourage people and to not discourage them or scare them away or overdo it. And I think um, if you're going to upgrade, especially a loved one's guitar, you know, whether it's a friend or, you know, a, a family member or whatever, I think you just don't want to do so much that they're overwhelmed with it. I think we get so excited about what we want and what we do that we might realize that they're not as into it as we are. Um, I do that to you all the time. I'm like, oh, hey, you should get this cool thing. And you're like, it's cool, but I'm just not into it as much as you are, you know, which and then I have to go, oh, all right. And if I'm patient, what did you get on? I don't know. Oh, you know what it is? It's from when I got sticky stuff when I took the wallpaper off the wall today. Um, you know, like the pocket knife thing or whatever. I could buy you some fancy pocket knife that you wouldn't appreciate. But then if I am patient and like you go, oh, I'm using your pocket knife and I really like this. And I, I start to learn over time, like, and then I get you something and you, you do appreciate it. So I think being patient with that stuff and not overdoing it when we're trying to encourage other people to play is, is important. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. I think there's a super chat in there. I didn't. Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay, go. Sarge978. Thank you for the super chat, Sarge. He says, good evening, good Dylan and Lady Leslie. Dragged my feet a little getting it out, but what I sent you should arrive on Saturday. Hope you dig it. This is wild. It's really good. Are you going to answer his question? Or acknowledge his <clears throat> Sorry. sharing? Yes, I'm going to more than acknowledge. Thank you. I don't know what you sent me. Hopefully it's not a snake, because that's the next thing I was going to tell you. Um, I talked to my enclosure guy. He told me four weeks or maybe a little less. I put a deposit down on a new enclosure uh, earlier this week. So um, he told me four weeks, maybe a little less. He said we usually runs four to six weeks. It's probably right about four right now. And he's like, with that one, I could probably get it done a little less than that. But I think right about four weeks. And I told him, well, my snake's coming from the northeast. We're waiting on weather. The northeast. That's probably fine. <clears throat> so anyway, just so you know about that as well. Thank you so much for whatever you're sending me. I'm excited about that. I, You know, people send us stuff. Like this bottle here. Um, People send us stuff from time to time, and it is, it always blows my mind because it, it's not even the getting free stuff part. That's not it, it. He said, nope, it's not the noodle. He's on standby <clears throat> whenever you're ready. It's 99% of the time somebody actually really gets us when they send us something. You know the guy that sent us this, the knife, the knife sharpener stone and the little gun cleaning mat? from our Amazon wish, like, it means you're paying attention. Like, I probably could be friends with that guy. Like, I, you know, we don't know you really, because we don't, we just talk to this camera right here all the time. But it's just so cool. Anyway, I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Damn, this is good. Yeah, there's a, it's caramel. There's like a, yeah, but it's not it's overly not, sweet. It's, it's not, not sweet. sweet. It doesn't burn. It's the mm -mm. smoothest. I mean, I thought our other tequila was smooth. This is incredible. Yeah, you could get in trouble with this. Yeah. Wow. This might be the best tequila I've ever had, actually. All right. <clears throat> Next. Yes. <laughs> Ivan. Hi, Dylan and Leslie. Dylan, I hope you're feeling better today. So, a little bit. I bought a set of flat wound guitar strings to try out and get a feel for them. 
my question is, what guitar style, if and would lend itself to using those strings? Pickup and scale length choices. Um. Okay, so I'm not a big flat wound guy. There might be some people in the comments that are. If I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking there might be a couple of people that I know that play with flat ones. My dad always has one guitar with flat ones on it. Usually it's a hollow body of some sort. Usually it's something with uh, a humbucker with a lot of clarity in it. Uh, the guitar that I think he's got flat ones on right now is a, like a guild with one of my mini humbuckers in it that has, you know, it's mine. So it's got some clarity to it. And he plays jazz. Um, scale length, I don't think it matters. I will say that um, they definitely are, they feel stiffer. Um, they do feel stiffer in, in my experience anyway. So shorter scale length would be cool. You're not going to bend them a lot anyway, though. It's, it's just not what they're for, you know what I mean? Um, and usually they are a little heavier gauge. Uh, but I think that's one of those things. It's like sevens or eights. Like, put them on a guitar once and try it. You might hate it, but you also might play completely differently and explore something totally new. You know what I mean? You, they might be on there for two days, and you're like, I hate these things. <laughs> but you might also be like, oh, wait. <laughs> I'm on to something here. Jim Cunningham is sharing a story that I think is interesting. He said, once I had a problem with people bumping into my coffee table and spilling my beer. Then the story continues. I got a 20 gallon aquarium, a glass top and put a four foot prairie rattlesnake in it for a coffee table. Nobody spilled any beer after that. That's pretty funny. I've actually always wanted an aquarium coffee table. With fish, though. With like fish. Aquarium, yeah. yeah, with fish. I don't know that that's a good idea with our current craziness. Dog situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not. I think we all play too hard. <clears throat> maybe so. It's probably more us than the dog. All right. F. Stathio says, hello, Leslie and or Brianna and Dylan. I've been thinking of replacing my band practice amp, a Boss Katana 50MK2, mm -hmm. with an amp and cab sim pedal for some time now. We practice with in-ears. I've been eyeing the Boss IR2. Any thoughts, recommendations? Um, I'm a Tonex guy for that when it comes to that kind of money. Um, I really like it. I also really like the Boss thing. Um... I think it's pick a flavor at this point. Um, and it also depends how big of rig you want to build out, right? Like if you want a small pedal board and just play direct and be very, very small, there's options for that. If you need more flexibility with a bunch more profiles available and stuff, there's options for that. And there's new stuff coming out all the time, like next week on Wednesday. But, miserable but that's all we're saying about that miserable turd last month i bought three of your p90 pickups i had my local luthier install them along with installing a maple warmoth neck to my three p90s black strat i finally got the guitar back from him last week he's been my luthier for the last 20 years he told me these were hands down the best sounding p90s he's ever heard no i'm not kidding Way to go, Dylan. Damn right. That's really nice, though. Thank you. Thank you, miserable turd. Not sarcastic. It's actually your name. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, you know, anytime anybody can share uh, a review besides me, I mean, I'm very proud of them, obviously, and I love them, but I also really love P90s. So it's not just, you know, it's not just my stuff. It's just, I just love P90s. So, um, Anytime we can hear from others 
Um, I, I, I appreciate that a lot. And, and guitar text too. It's kind of neat when it's not even the, the, the client who bought the thing. It's somebody else who is like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm just the guy that put them in and these things are great. That, that's really cool. So yeah, because he was probably excited about it, but this was just like a service. Yeah, he's it's, like full on third party, yeah. no connection yeah. to anything. Doesn't know you. Right, yeah. yeah. We could even have confirmation bias just from yeah. I'm buying it because I like Maybe he likes me or maybe he likes the channel or whatever. Right. But a totally third party person who has no connection, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good God, this is the best tequila I've ever had. Dave. <clears throat> this is Dave Chins off. I, I realized that as soon as I saw the second word. Yeah. Did Yin's pre-order Pearl Jam's new album, Dark Matter? It's being released tomorrow. That's a question for you. Um, I have not. <laughs> I really like the song that's out, though. I, I do, too. I kind of forgot about it. Yeah, me too. So tomorrow, yeah. Why would I pre-order? I can just listen to it tomorrow. Do you have to pre-order things now if you just listen to all music? I don't know. I don't buy music anymore. I just subscribe I to mean, the I thing. I mean, I pay for music. Well, I know, but like, it's not the same. We don't own it anymore, you know? That's yeah, but weird... you don't have to own it because you can just have everything at your fingertips. Yeah, I understand that. There is a... Th mm. That's a whole Can you get it on vinyl? Yeah, I'm sure you can. I bet we can. I bet we can go down and talk to... Our guy and get it on vinyl. Evan, Evan is the guy. Evan, he's our guy. We have a we have a good vinyl guy. Oh, you know what you need to do? Ooh! Ooh. Don't waste that stuff. You gotta oh. hit the auto mix button. You didn't do that. I forgot. All right, <clears throat> Charles. Good evening, Leslie and Dylan. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Thank you, Charles. I love Charles's consistency and gratitude. It's like a good pause reminder every time I see that. Yeah. And you know, um, he's a reminder of not just him, but we'll use him, of everybody else who's just here every week. Like, and maybe not even never, ever commented. I don't know you random person who's never commented, but you've watched every freaking video every week or more often than not, the person who's never commented, never super chatted, never anything, but has five sets of pickups because they've bought everything we've ever made mm -hmm. because we do have those folks too. I don't know who you are. I just see an order come in. Well, and, and you've never commented. Uh, well, maybe your YouTube name is something I don't recognize. Yeah, I was going to say there but, can be a disconnect with YouTube names but too. But I know for sure that there are we have loyal customers who love what we do, who never comment, who never say anything, who never super chat, who never anything, but they buy everything we make. And I so there's all kinds of free and not free ways to show appreciation. And that comment from Charles just makes me think of everybody who's here who might not even ever click anything. And we still appreciate you just being here. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's it's awesome. So Robert Olin <clears throat> says a pre-order helps the artist out. So I don't know if that helps ranking oh, somehow. Yeah, probably. Actually, I guess that's how books work too. Yeah. I never thought of it like that, but yeah. Yeah, because you can get on the bestseller list before the book comes out. Right. Interesting. I just never, literally never thought about it. <laughs> um, I feel like, oh, okay. Let me grab another question there. I think that was all. That's all the yeah. on-topic stuff? Yep. You ready for yeah, I am. other things? Shane Walton. Two weeks ago, Dylan argued that there is no such thing as, quote, overpriced. However, couldn't we argue that a $5,500 Nags is overpriced compared to an $1,800 Texas Toast? Does Nags add $3,000 worth of extra value? Um, you know, I was thinking about this very question tonight. Um, and I want to do a podcast about it because... Um, yeah, 
I think it is. I think it does. I think there is um, one of the things that you get with a Nags is you get the provenance of Joe Nags. Um, you get the experience, you get the name, and you 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 know you get that guy. Now, at some point, you're going to buy a Nags that's going to be after he's passed away, and that's going to be worth a different amount of money. Um, you know, I, that I think, yeah, I think so. I think, I think that, I also think that whatever it's worth, there's different levels of appreciation for different products, um, because of what's important to different people and what's important to me is different than what's important to you. And so you will value something differently. Um, I value things that people, other people would not. You know, I spend a certain amount of money for a pocket knife that you would not. I spend a certain amount of money for a pen that you would not. Um, because it it's it's not valuable to you. But that's why we have the market that we have. So I can have a certain amount of money and I can decide where I want to put that. It doesn't mean that the product is less or more. It's the value of the purchaser. And so I think that this conversation is interesting, especially in guitar land, because people spend so much time on the actual product itself and not the value of the product to the person who's using it. Everywhere else, it's the value of the product. I, you know, the, I'm I'm a part of some pretty wacky niche stuff, you know, when it comes to pocket knives and guitars and fountain pens and guns and all these things that I'm into. Guitars are the only one where people put so much value on the actual thing that it takes away from the experience. Um, now there are people that'll say, I will never spend more than a hundred dollars for a fountain pen. Okay. No problem. I will never spend more than a hundred dollars for a fountain pen without a gold nib in it. Okay. Makes sense. I get it. But usually they're also not trying to find, now there are the people who buy the Jin house and the stuff from China and are like this Chinese pen is just as good as this Mont Blanc. And we all know it's not. So there are those people. But they're very small in number, and they are not driving the industry the same way, or they don't think they're driving the industry the same way. The other thing with this is that... I can't interrupt you the same way when you have the button control. Oh. Super chat from John own 13 can't play any Roddy. 13. It's been a while. 13. I think he was 11 last time. Uh, glad to be catching a live podcast. Thanks for the education. Would love to see a video where you describe what you hear, what sounds, frequencies when listening to bad pickups. Yeah, we've done that video and I will do it again. That's Thank you fun. for the super chat, John Roddy. Welcome That's back. Fun. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, I want to do, I want to talk more about that. People don't like talking about money. They get uh, really irritated. There's a bunch of people in the comments that are like, uh, and in a couple of videos ago, where it was like, I stopped listening because all you want to talk about. And I'm like, no, it's all everybody wants to talk about. I'm trying to put some reason into this thing. All right, let's see. Um, what I hear in bad pickups, huh? I am writing it down. With my extremely boutique made by one guy in Aiken, South Carolina pen. That doesn't cost $5. Mm -hmm. BMAC. I have a custom shop telly, not happy with pickups. Please recommend which of your pickups you'd recommend as well as one other option. Fralin, Lawlers. Uh, honestly, I would either put our flat sixes in it. Um, we make a version of our, well, our flat sixes are 
very similar to what I was putting in John Cruz's stuff after he left Fender. And they're freaking amazing. They're freaking amazing. Um, if you didn't use mine, I really like the Duncan Antiquities. Those are, if for telly stuff, those would be my. So no other boutique recommendation? You know, well, Duncan Antiquities are not cheap. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're their custom shoppy kind of. Yeah, that's what I would do. Jason Albert says, is Dylan going to be fascinated with the tequila all night? Oh my God, yes. The more I drink it, the more fascinated I'm going to get, I'll tell you that. Not really. It's, it's It doesn't hit you like that. Mm -mm. It's just so easy. This is the smoothest stuff ever. It's smoother than any scotch I have. It's smoother than any bourbon I have. Well, I have some Jefferson's Ocean down there that's pretty smooth. But this, I have some Blanton's down there that's very smooth too. But this is, it's incredible. And it's, there's a caramely nuttiness to it. You do not taste the agave side of it hardly at all. It's just totally different. Anyway, yeah, so yes, I'm very fascinated with it. Dog Dr. Tim says, can you say what music service or stream you use? I mean, we just use Apple Music. I use Spotify some, but I don't pay for it. I don't pay for Spotify used to right yeah but i i don't like how it um i don't like its predictive stuff and i don't like how it builds i like playlists. apples yeah apples like spying on you thing works pretty good actually yeah, i like it it's yeah, fun i agree and they have family plans and what i like about apples too is it it gives you what you want to hear, but it also then injects new enough to where you're not like in an echo chamber of your not all the time. same old no, music all the time. No, you can choose what you want. Well, but I'm saying that it's easier to do that. I think Spotify, I, I, I just didn't like how Spotify did that. So I that's why I ended up not, yeah. Not sponsored. <clears throat> Jim Cunningham, by the way, have you seen the custom guitar for Soundgarden's guitarist? Oh, for Kim Thale? Uh-uh. I have not. I mean, I wouldn't, so I can't. I don't have a scrolly bar. Not the official name. A scrolly bar? What is the official name? Just scroll bar. Oh, okay. Um, wow. Don't make it complicated. I mean, I figured you would know. There's always some name for everything. There is. And some things are controversial and everybody calls them something different. Like, like a what? hamburger menu. I hate that. Like the three the lines. The three lines. I they call that. it a hamburger menu. I hate that. I think it's a dumb Not name. everybody does though. What's the, what's the other name? I don't know. Right now. It's still up for debate. Is that what we're no, talking? No, no, no. I, I just I can't think of what it is. I don't care. Hamburger menu is a dumb name. Yeah, that's a dumb name. I don't want to write that in an article. It should be called the Hamburglar menu. No. No. What about the club sandwich menu? No. Because there's it three. would have more layers. There's then. three. Oh. It would have to have more layers if it was club. The Big Mac menu. Mm. Nobody likes that. One. Just kidding. A lot of people do. <laughs> Not me. Um, Jim Woodard, what do you think of the decisions by Gibson and PRS to put the pickups and hardware from their more expensive models on the Epiphone and S2 lines? Um. Well... Those are two different companies doing two different things. So let's talk about that. The core model and the S2 lines have always been more closely related than um, 
users want to believe. So the S2 is an American guitar with SE pickups in it, basically. The new guitar is a Guild Polera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so now they're putting better pickups in it. And I, I that's cool. I, that's cool. I, you know, whatever. I, I get it. Uh, Gibson is they're they're trying to capture a middle a middle ground and honestly they're really trying to get the just as good as guys they're trying to catch the folks who um can't afford or don't want to spend the money for a Gibson guitar but they still want certain things about a Gibson guitar um, and they're willing to play an Epiphone. Um, it's still going to be an Epiphone. I mean, I just, you know, I just sold that, that DG335. And um, he got that today. And it showed up perfect. So um, I don't know who he is. but He was in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. It'll, yeah, it only went one day. I mean, away. I don't know him. but Anyway, um, and that guitar was great. It sounded great. It sounded like a Gibson pickup in an Epiphone. But it was still an Epiphone. It was still a plastic guitar made in China. Um, and, and so there's going to be a space for that. I think it's great. I think, I think that the $1,500 Epiphone has a place. I really do. I think I fully support it. They need to close the gap from the, seven, the $899 Les Paul to the $3,000 Les Paul. And they're trying to close that gap. They look at Fender and they see that Fender has a guitar from two ninety nine dollars all the way to 10000 bucks. Like, I swear, every 300 bucks, there's a different Fender, right? Gibson didn't have that. They, they didn't have that gap between there. And so they're trying to close that gap. Makes total sense. So how do you do it? You can't make an American guitar with all the features for $1,500. Uh, you can, the Gibson modern light is a, is a good example of that, but it's very stripped down and not a lot of people are going to want that. So to have a guitar that looks like a Les Paul, like really does look like a Les Paul, it has to be a Chinese guitar. So how do we close the gap? Well, when we put American parts in it, but it's still a Chinese guitar, that's how you do it. And it makes sense. So now you have a $1,500 Chinese Epiphone. It makes sense. And it's a great guitar. They're fantastic. That that thing I had, that 335 I had was really good. But if I'm gonna keep a 335 forever, it's gonna be a Gibson. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep an Epiphone forever. I thought I wanted to, and I was like, nope, it's still an Epiphone. So I I got rid of it. But that's that's why. So, but they've got to close that price gap somehow. And and that's how you do it. I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> John Martin, what's closest to the Roy Buchanan Nancy pickups for a telly? Oh wow! Um, you know. That's probably a 50s thing. I mean, our flat six would still work for that. Um, we're going to be able to get you your 50s and your 60s right in there. And I, that would still still work for that on the bridge side. Sir Sneaker Pimp, why are single coil pickups longer than humbuckers? Form factor from how they were made. And um, because you're... Remember that humbuckers came second and humbuckers were uh, basically, oh, there's this many wines on a P90. Let's just split it in half and put it in a guitar. And it ended up being smaller and shorter. Yeah. Corey's Garden. Do you ship mounting hardware with your D90s? Wanting three for neck in three of my tellies later this spring and summer. Um, we ship screws with all of our pickups yes the p90s um yes we do 
Somebody left a four star review. Mm. Um, it, uh, totally cool. I, I was actually going to send him an email today uh, instead of a five star review because he said that uh, he got a, um, a Telecaster bridge pickup and all three screws didn't have the same screw heads on them. And I got to looking and I'm like, no joke, man. They must have changed. My supplier must have changed like vendors where they got their screws. And so I have a container in there where some of the screws are different. Cult, like the the color of the metal is a little different. Mm. So if you're watching and you want me to send you three screws that all match, I will do that. And I so today I was like, you know what? I need to separate these all out and like put them into sets so that they're so that we don't do that to somebody. And then I think the next batch I get, they'll all be the same, but I'm like in a changeover period. I, you know, the vendors will do that stuff to you. And I didn't even notice it. And he, he, he said that I was like, Oh crap. All right. I'll check it out. <clears throat> Super chat button. Done. Super chat from Sarge978. Thank you for the super chat, Sarge. He says, no too much for an epi. Too poor for a gibby. Patience and savings are not strong suits. Lay sigh. LOL. Yeah. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with those epiphones. They're really good. They're really good. Uh, the only thing, the only problem, here's the, here's the problem in the guitar industry guitar players need to recognize and be okay with like internally just like betterhelp.com slash dylan talks tone if you need to there's a discount uh if you sign up with us internally like get to the point where you realize that you are the guitar player that is the epiphone guy or the Squire guy, or the Fender guy, or the SE guy, or the Core guy, or the Gibson guy, or the American Fender guy, or the Custom Shop guy. Whoever you are, that's who you are. And those guitar brands have a guitar for you. And that's okay. And then the other guitar player who doesn't have the same guitar as you doesn't need to talk crap about you in the comments. Just don't be friends with that guy. Just be friends with whoever like likes your guitar, no matter what it is. It's once we could get to that point, then none of this matters. And we can just say, I like my guitar because I like it. Not because I read about something about it on a forum. Like I like my guitar. Um, and then if you want to do something to it and make it cool, DylanTalksTone.com, you buy some pickups. Because you don't have to, but you can. And that's how life should be. And you should. And that's how life should be. Curtis Chavez, <clears throat> Dylan, do you think that the just as good as guys are mostly us Gen Xers who missed out on buying Les Paul Juniors and lap steels for cheap. Now with the internet, those days are gone. No, I don't think so. Um, maybe. I think, I don't know, because there is a generation of folks who complain about inflation a lot, who complain about how it used to be, all that kind of stuff, and music sucks, and all this, whatever. Um, and maybe they are those guys. I don't know. That is a really interesting question. I really need, what I should do is sign up for better help and be like, Hey man, do you want to come on my podcast? Cause you think it's all psychological? I do. I really do. I think it's, there is something I've thought about this for a lot, a long time, and I, I really feel like the person that needs the music, that needs the validation, that needs the, do you think my guitar is cool? 
Uh, did I pick the right pick guard color? Um, I care about what's on the peg head and this says a squire. So I take the picture so it doesn't show on Instagram. Um, you know, all, all those things, there is something about that. Trauma. Trauma. Generational trauma. Yes. Dr. Spock screwed it up for all of us. No, I'm I'm just saying I, I there's got there has to be something to it. There has to be something to it. <clears throat> yep. That's why BetterHelp is a good sponsor for our channel. I'm just saying. Anyway, next question. It's a bad time to tell you I don't have one. Really? Wow. Well, I'm going to take a sip and talk about this tequila again then. Oh, there we go. People show up. Oh. Okay, go. Super chat from Sarge978. Thank you for the super chat, Sarge. He says, honestly, Schecters are my go-to. The most naturally comfortable to me. Swap pickups and call it a day. Can't shake the longing for a true less, though. You know, um, I have a Schecter, and I absolutely love it. Everyone else hates it because it's a Machine Gun Kelly signature. I love that guitar. And you're right. There is something. It, it's true. It's whatever they did at Schecter. It's like they took a Fender and they were like, okay, we're going to make it faster. We're going to make it more comfortable. Um, more ergonomic, which I don't know how you could do more than a Fender really, but they, they did like the neck profiles, the the body shapes, the everything. I, I don't know. They're just so good. And then they make them reasonably priced too. You know, they're, of course, you know, they're most of them. I, well, the ones that I've had uh, have been in made in Indonesia, but they've been great guitars. The one I've got is made in Indonesia and it's freaking unbelievable. I love that guitar and I have not changed pickups in it. I have not done anything to it. I love it. I um, just played it yesterday. Do you know what Oban is? I do. I love Oban. Jim Cunningham says, is this smoother than Oban? Oh, yeah. Big time. There you go. Yep. I don't know what that is. What is it? It's a scotch. Hmm. Cool. It's creamy almost. Hmm. I don't get that impression at all. Mm, I love creamy it. Creamy is not. <clears throat> mm. Well, you don't like that term because. Oh. Well. I just think of dairy when I hear the word creamy. Yeah, no, I, it's not what I meant. It's, I don't know. It's so good. Wow. Anyway. Anyway. We're running out of questions. Yeah. I mean, I don't. You don't have anything to say? I don't have anything to say. I mean, I, I don't normally have anything to say here. I don't have any questions that I've gathered, though. Oh, wait. Do I have one right here? No, I don't. That was the last thing. A lot of people have talked in the comments because Dickie Betts passed away. Yep. I heard about that. Um, Jim Cunningham, it is Grand Coramino. Yeah. I'll probably post a picture of the bottle on Instagram. He didn't tell me how much it cost. So it was a uh, hundred and fifteen dollars. I don't know. It was one hundred and fifteen dollars, something like that. Terabia, I'm probably saying that wrong. I apologize. It said creamy equals smooth and thick? Question mark. Yeah, it's so it's got like a caramely notes to it like almost honey but not um not honey though like agave yeah but so agave has a very uh but what is plant kind of so they have like blanco and reposado what's that what's that oh añejo that means that's the um amount of time 
Right. So that means it would have a more, <clears throat> it's longer, right? Longer, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Sarge978 said, did we jump to the off topic already? No, not really. Not really. Um, We don't want to cut it short. Mello Pamini. Is that how you said it? I forgot. I think so. Mello Pamini. Mm -hmm. Dylan, have you ever tried an offset Telecaster? I have. In fact, I almost bought one like three or four months ago. Um, but I knew it was a guitar that I wasn't going to be able to... I, I knew it was a guitar that I wasn't going to keep. And I was like, I probably have a hard time selling this. So I didn't buy it. But I think they're so cool, man. I think they're so cool. Vinny's World said he just built one recently and put your pickups in it. He did. Yeah. A blue. It's like blue, black and blue, maybe something like that. Um, it's Victoria G. Did you see the Vox tube amp scented candle? I ordered one. Oh, it scrolled. Um, I ordered one because I always said if I moved to a modeler, I'd miss that sweet, sweet tube smell. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I did not know that that was a thing, and I should have that. You should check that out. I'm going to write that down, Vox too. tube amp scented candle. Uh, Speaking of wish list stuff, Vox. Curtis tube. Chavez says, there was someone here asking for recommendations for T-style pickups. I think we answered that. Yeah. What did you say? Flat six? Yeah, our flat six is for sure. And then um, for his custom shop, I would definitely go with those. Uh, I really like those Seymour Duncan um, antiquities. Those are really good. Sunbay says, I love my offset Squire Telly. They are so cool, man. I, I was going to buy one at a guitar center one time, and the only one they had was the butterscotch one. And you know in the Squires, the butterscotch... One doesn't look like a real, it, it, it's kind of a gross color. It's like a honey color and I, I just didn't really like it. And they didn't have it in a different color, so I didn't buy it. But yeah, they're really neat. Um, Vinny's World said the Telly one is the one with the chameleon paint job. That's right. That's right. I Mel remember seeing him post pictures of it. Mela Pamini says, I love mine. I did a four-way mod and it sounds cool. The pickups Ooh. are surprisingly not bad, though I may consider replacing them. We have a four-way drop-in kit, dude. I just shipped two of those today. People are buying them like crazy right now. So what we do is we take a... <clears throat> Since we started doing these like wiring kit things, it's been really popular. People have been a lot. We've been having to order so many pots and so many... Because people are buying tons of them. Um, I got another shipment coming tomorrow. So, But what we're doing with the Tele stuff is we make a three-wire neck pickup. So that you don't have to worry about the cover humming or whatever, any of that weird stuff. Lawler charges 15 bucks to put an extra wire on a pickup. Just saying. We don't. Um, so we put an extra wire on it. So it's a three-wire neck pickup. And then uh, we do a four-way uh, drop-in kit. And then you could order it with knobs and a plate and all that kind of stuff. We did add black, so I need to change the website. We're slowly adding um, more and more options as we go. But this adventure into uh, all this wiring stuff has been a lot more expensive than I thought. So I'm, I'm really not a lot more expensive. Just we're having to buy a lot more inventory. It, it Well... If that came out wrong, I didn't mean it to come out wrong. This is not complaining. It's going way better than I thought it was going. And so now I am like, holy crap, we have prepared. to buy a lot of yeah. stuff. And I was not prepared. Yeah. And so I'm having to slow down, I guess, the number of options that we are wanting to roll out. I wanted to roll out a bunch more options and I, I just can't because it's like, whoa, this is going crazy way more than I thought. But we want to have pick guards and everything. Like I, I'd like to be able to, to have, um, you know, if you have, for example, with our tele kit now, you can option a humbucker in the neck position. But I'd like to be able to offer a black, a white, or a cream, or a mint pick guard, so that you don't have to buy a pick guard somewhere else. Like I'd like to be able to do all those things. But it's just, you know, we have to inventory all that stuff, and it's just, oh my gosh, it's a lot. So we're we're working on it. So be patient with us and keep checking back on the website. 
and uh, especially with the special order stuff. You know, so I've been doing a lot of experimenting with different pickup covers and different stuff like that. And it's a way to, you know, if, if we come out with these little short run things, like everybody wants filter trons, right? Well, then we make some and we put them in the special order section, like the little custom section, and nobody buys them. You know, if people go in there and buy them, I'm like, oh, crap, maybe we need to carry them all the time. You know, the the um, the P90s with the mesh in them, those actually might become a regular. We might drop a set of them every 90 days or something. Mm. Because people really love them and we sell them out like, I mean, at, faster than I can make them, you know, but then some other stuff kind of just sits there, you know, the, the blackout pickups sat there, the white pickups sat there. Okay. Makes sense. I kind of thought so. Um, everybody wanted 12 holes. We sold two so far. Um, you know, so these are all little market experiments too, right? So when we put them up, uh, we, we just want to make sure that you know about them and maybe you don't, maybe, you know, maybe you missed it when we put them up or whatever. It's no big deal too. So that's why I leave them up for a few weeks and see, and then we kind of take them off and change them and stuff. But just know that if, if they go nuts, we'll make more, we'll make more. Curtis Chavez says, Dylan recommend Mustang to receive Dylan Stang pickups. Yeah, for sure. Phil Grochel. I apologize if I said that wrong. Hello, first time catching a laugh. I have a Gretsch 5420 with filter trons. I would like the Dynasonics, but what else would you recommend for country rockabilly? Um, I have nothing for that guitar. Uh, so go with your gut on that deal. Um, and I, to, to tell you the honest truth, I am not a Gretsch aficionado that is the guitar when it comes to various sounds and intentions of sound and stuff that's probably the guitar i know the least about just to be honest with you i i gotta give you a big fat i don't know on that one um <clears throat> terabia will you eventually make ibanez wire harnesses no probably not um, because the, um, demand is so low that it's not worth stocking the parts. And here's why. Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is the demand is very low. Um, number two, the reason you're wanting to get a Ibanez wiring harness probably is because the switch is crap. The problem is, is that the Ibanez switches have to be shorter so we can't use our normal high quality switch that we sell with all of our other kits so we have to buy a version of the same cheap switch that you already have so that it will fit in your guitar and it's not really an improvement that i feel comfortable selling so that's why we we don't um the only we sell the best of everything on our website like when it comes to Replacement parts, um, you know, obviously pickups are are very relative and you can say that you like somebody else's pickups more than mine and I will not be offended. Um, but when it comes to replacement parts like pots and caps and stuff like that, I want to make sure that we pick the best of the best um, so that you don't ever have a reliability issue. And I cannot guarantee that with those shorter uh, PCB style switches. I just, I can't guarantee it, so I won't sell them. All right. We've got a few more and we're running out of time. Jim okay, let's Cunningham, do it. you make any acoustic pickups for a round sound hole? We do not. Um, Curtis Chavez, will the Firebird pickups fit into a filter Tron route? I have a Gretsch Electromatic, but the pickups are horrible. I don't know the answer to that. I don't think so. Vinny's World, I love this idea. Just by the way, Vinny's World, do you have a place on the site that can be a gallery of past vault offerings? Uh, that's a great idea. Current answer is no. Great idea. Thank you, Vinny. <clears throat> 
All right. It's nine. It is nine. Dun, dun, dun. That means it's off topic hour. That means you get to ask any question you want as long as it's not about guitars. If you ask a guitar question after nine o'clock, it has to be in a super chat. We do this so that we can hang out with you. For those of you that are new to the channel, we do this so we can hang out with you and just get to know you and just be friends. Um, because I think that's really important to the community and not just our community, but the guitar community in general. I think we just need to be friends. And so, um, and we've made, made friends with a lot of you. So ask any question you want off topic about our lives and stuff outside of guitars and, you know, all that kind of stuff. We have some, um, you can ask them ahead of time on Patreon and on, on the YouTube members can ask them ahead of time. So we have a few of those that we're going to do first. Um, and then again, if you use a super chat, you can ask a guitar question. Uh, if you don't want to use a super chat to ask a guitar question, just come back next week, um, and ask them before nine o'clock. Or, uh, if you can't make these things live, you can just join Patreon, the cheapest thing and it's five bucks or whatever. And then you can end up, uh, you know, ask ahead of time and then watch it and replay and we'll make sure that we feature them like we did these earlier ones. You, you have to try this tequila. You, we have to watch her face. So, but Brianna doesn't usually like tequila. Brianna likes yeah, but Brianna doesn't usually like tequila. Why are we talking about her like in the third here? person? <laughs> you're you're going to speak in the third person. It usually you don't like it because it's like too alcoholy, sort of. This is like the smoothest, easiest stuff to drink ever. It's like candy. It doesn't suck. No, it she does didn't not even suck. Make a face. Uh -uh. I was waiting for it. No. Oh my God. <clears throat> All right, let's do the Patreon questions. Sarge, glad you're feeling better. Thank you. What's your preferred steel in an in a in a knife? I was hesitant to get my Benchmade Super Freak in M4 because of concerns with corrosion resistance, but I've had zero issues, and it's been my EDC for over two years. Um, I like, so my two favorite knives right now that I carry the most um, is a Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom, and it's 20 CV, and... I got three favorites. Uh, I've got a Hogue Deca that's Magna Cut. You can't go wrong with Magna Cut. Um, because that's kind of the new hotness. And then I have a Chris Reeves Sabenza that I carry a lot. And that that is uh S45 VN. S45 VN is probably my favorite because it's the easiest to sharpen, easiest to strop. Um, all my knives are so sharp that I just strop them every few days, you know. Um, and I, and I like them, I, you know, I like them for that. I don't worry about corrosion as long as I use them. So if you're daily carrying a Benchmade Freak and it's an M4, but you're daily carrying it and using it and you're cutting a box every day or every other day, it's not going to corrode anyway. The only reason it's going to corrode is if you don't use it, you just have to keep using them. And if you don't use them, get some, um, just get some clear shoe wax, like a, like clear shoe polish, you know, like it, it'll be neutral shoe polish and it'll just be white. It's just wax. And then just take a paper towel and just wipe your blades. So like I have, um, some fixed blades over there that are like 1095, uh, you know, steel and I also have um, some carbon steel kitchen knives that I just oil them every, I don't know, month, I guess. I was like, not, not that often. If I don't use them a lot. Because um, I don't always carry all my fixed blades. And they're, they're over there on a magnet strip. And so I just make sure that I keep them waxed. No big deal. Robert, 
suggestions for a decent fountain pen. First one, looking for good quality, less concerned about budget. Hmm. This could be a lot of things. I put some links in the description because I did see this. A question. fountain pen. A fountain pen. So if you're just wanting to investigate fountain pens and understand them. Investigate. I mean, a Lamy Safari is the easiest. But, okay. That's what I have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Twisby Eco or Twisby uh, Diamond 580. There's where I would go first. Uh, if you want to spend a few bucks more, um, I left a couple of links. If you want something really nice that could be like a lifetime pen, um, a Pilot Custom 74 or a uh, Sailor Pro Gear Slim, I left some links on in the description that will get you those for reasonable amounts of money. Um, but Twisby, T-W-S-B-I, for anybody that they're, like the pen you have, it's like 35 bucks. Well, not that one, because that one's rose gold and stuff, but the, the plain one's like 35 bucks. And it would get you a really good writing experience and you'd be able to use whatever ink you wanted because it's a piston filler and stuff. It comes with the tools to maintain it and clean it. It's a really cool setup. Um, and that would be the jam. She uses a Twisby every day to draw. She uses a Twisby on her desk every day. And she's not a fountain pen person. She's just a person who likes a pen that I gave her. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's what I would <clears throat> Joshua Hawks, what would be your EMP proof end of the civilized world vehicle? EMP proof? Is that the rays or whatever? No, that's the electromagnetic pulse, which means it can't have any electronics in it. That's dumb. I don't know. Because... I know what my... Now I have REM stuck in my head. I know what my end of day's vehicle is. It's that off-road motorhome thing. The, <laughs> um, you know the one. The Earth Roamer. Earth Roamer. That's right. Yeah, the Earth Roamer. Not the big, big one. The medium-sized one. It's the still one, probably like a million dollars. The one that's only like 850000 Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Um... The one that's on like a F550 chassis, that's the one that we would get. But it would still not be EMP proof because it's all like freaking super fancy inside and solar and stuff. It's cool. EMP, that's like Mad Max junk. That's like. Then does it even matter? No, I don't think so. Tank. I mean, maybe. I don't know. They have tubes in it. That's a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, let's see. All right. Mela Pamini says, Ooh, what fountain pen is that? I'm currently using my Sailor Prophet Professor and Pilot Custom 74. Also, which ink? Wait, where is, the, where are they from? I don't know. Because if they say Sailor Prophet Professor, they are not in the United States. Well, they have um, umlauts over their name, so they're so probably not. In the I believe States. that the Sailor Prophet Professor is actually the Sailor Pro Gear mm. in the United States. Custom seventy four is still a Custom seventy four. Um, if you follow our other channel, our YouTube dot com slash Dylan and Leslie, I do a bunch of fountain pen stuff over there, and I'm gonna actually do like a tour of all of my fountain pens. Right now, I am using, if you're a fountain pen nerd, you'll know, this is a Carolina Pen Company pen, but you may not know who Carolina Pen Company is, but you may know who Jonathan Brooks is. Jonathan Brooks owns Carolina Pen Company, and he makes a lot of very interesting resins for Visconti, for um, 
I mean, for, for lots of companies all over the world, he is one guy in his garage in Beach Island, South Carolina. He lives like 15 minutes from me. And uh, we exchanged information at the Atlanta Pen Show. I got to meet him, and I bought a couple pens from him. So this is a this is a Jonathan Brooks pen. And uh, he told me he's like, "Yeah, give me a call, man. Come over anytime." Like I, we we connected and cha- exchanged numbers and stuff. He's a really cool guy. But anyways, uh, it's a Jonathan Brooks pen. So yeah. And what ink? It is. Uh... Isn't that your sailor ink? No, this is. Diamine Polar Glow. It's my favorite blue ink. So Melopamini says, I'm in the U.S. I bought the profit used from someone online. Interestingly, my Custom 74 was also a Japanese one purchased secondhand. Okay, cool. So they're, but they're, they must be Japanese. So I bought, um, I have a few pens from Japan. I have a, I have a Sailor Pro Gear Imperial Black um, that I bought from Japan. I have a Sailor, I have a Pilot Custom 74 um, in burgundy, which is not an American color. That's actually at a nib um, technician right now. I, the nib was a little weird when, so I sent it out to have somebody work on it for me. So that, that nib is being um, worked on right now. That's out. Um, and then I bought, Mm, I guess those are the two that I bought from Japan. I got a knife. I got a knife. I got a pen from um, Romania or Serbia or somewhere because it's a North. I bought a North Korean pen, which is really cool, and that just came last week. And then I bought a pen from the former USSR too. So, and I think that pen came from Japan. I think. Yeah, that pen came from Japan too. Yep. Um <clears throat> Mar- Oops. Sorry. That was me. Marsha Murray says, Do you have a pen knife? That would be bond cool. You do. She Mel- has a pen knife. It's really cool. Mel Santiago says, What lights and cameras are you using to stream? We are using um the Insta 360. What's it called? I don't remember. It's their webcam. It's really cool. And then for lights, we are using this is a aperture. Um, it's an aperture 100x or whatever, 200x. It's big. It's a 36 inch dome. And I have it mounted on a wall. We're going to do a full kind of like new studio tour because we just moved. And so we're going to do a new thing. We're using the Mackie DLZ Creator uh, podcasting uh, platform mixer deal and two Rode pod mics. Uh, And then we go into uh, MacBook Pro and we use our software is um, Ecamm Live. So this is Brianna's. Pen knife. So this is a pen, and it has a little switchblade in it. And it's not like a million dollars or anything. It wasn't cheap, though. But it's cool. Jim Cunningham says, where are you that you're an hour ahead of Central Standard Time? Eastern Standard. We are in Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're in Augusta, Georgia. Sir Sneaker Pimp, do you have leather covered steering wheels? If so, what do you recommend as a conditioner? Um, I use Meguiar's stuff uh, just because that's what I have. And I do have leather covered steering wheels. Mr. One. Goat says would either of you ever remarry if one of you passed away i don't think i would i love you guys that much um you wouldn't remarry if one of us passed away that's weird i mean i know that we've got fans but that's next level right there um that is a question i do not 
answer because I don't want to answer it. Because I don't want to. Because I don't ever want to have to answer it. Oh. So it's just something I don't think about. But you're thinking about it right now. I I can't imagine. I cannot imagine wanting to. I can't imagine anything better than this. First of all, second of all, I can't imagine doing it again. Good answer. Yeah. Same. You know what I mean? I'm not I can't, doing this crap again. No. That's my answer. No. I For both reasons. I can't imagine anything better, and I can't imagine ever, like, doing it again. And then how would you choose, like, like, you're a lot to live up to. Duh. Uh, <laughs> just saying, <laughs> you know, like, you know. And then there's her. She would be like, uh, no, not this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, I don't like the way she blinks. Exactly. <clears throat> so yeah, it just wouldn't work. It's a good answer. I don't know. It is an answer. Kevin, blinking's important because I mean, can you imagine like every time they blink? Wow, this is a tangent. <laughs> I was not expecting to go down. Kevin Bright says just really big letters, just wanted to say hello. I live in New York, but I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Would love to hang out with you sometime. Cazadores Reposado is a great smooth tequila and cheaper than most good tequilas. You know what? I um, have had that before, and I'm going to write that down. We have had that, I think, in our... Okay. DDIO1978 says, my curiosity around fountain pens gets stymied every time I think about writing with one since I'm left-handed, LOL. I'm left-handed. Yeah. There's no problem. Stymied is a great word. Though. Stymied is a great word. Anyway. <laughs> it is a good word. It's, it's really good. That's word. a word that's easy to add to a uh, vocabulary, too. And it it is a good word. Um, Dude, don't worry about it. Two things I would tell you, um, and I would say this to anybody getting into fountain pens at all, start with a fine nib so that you're not putting so much ink on the paper that uh, you have to worry about it drying quickly. Oh, he might have to go out. And um, just just keep it simple. Don't, don't, don't stress about it. And then when you write... Um, I mean, I don't know that I even think about it anymore. And, and, unless, unless you're, you're like a person those, who like really yeah. hooks over. I, I used to be that way. And I will say that when I started writing with a fountain pen, I think I did consciously um, turn my hand more straight down with the paper. But you can turn your paper too. And the other thing is that... Um, you have to hold the pen a certain angle so that the pen works. Like if you hold the pen backwards, it won't really work anyway. So if you just get the pen to write right correctly. Um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you get the pen to write correctly, then you won't have a problem. And if you start to smear ink, there are inks. Well, I guess this is a video I should do too is... Um, yeah, inks for left-handers because I don't worry about it because I don't have the problem. Um, but there are... Can you push a button? I'm interrupting you. <clears throat> super chat from Sarge978. Thank you for the super chat, Sarge. He says, I have something to tell you. I'm not left-handed. Ha. Huh. Neither am I. Neither is she. Neither is she. Yeah. No, I, it, it's not a problem. I don't have a problem with it. There's left-handed nibs and stuff. I've never even tried them. I don't even care. Dog Dr. Tim. Hey, Dylan. I got something the other day that is sort of like a tactical fountain pen. It's a Yang Ku. I know, likely Chinese, but it is cool. Has a knurled body in black, writes well. That's interesting. I was just looking at a um, 
I was just watching a video today about a Faber Castell that looks like a tactical flashlight. It's kind of cool. Mela Pamini says Lammy makes specific left-handed nibs. Not quite sure how they differ, though. Yeah, I've seen those. You should try it so you could talk. I about should it. just buy one and try it. Yeah. Um, Vox Guitars <laughs> Rock, Dylan, do you have any BPS knives from Ukraine? No, I do not. I do not. You know, there are a few knife manufacturers in, um. Eastern Europe that I am very interested in, and I have not. I I'm have letting not. Sarge down every time. Why? Because he just said, come on, that's a Princess Bride reference. So when he says these things, I think he's. Oh, it is. I hate that She movie. hates that movie. I love that movie. Have you ever seen it? I don't think so. She would like it. You would love it. She's weird. You would love it. I know what you like. Anyway. Okay. That was like the worst mom look ever. Like she wasn't even mad at me, but it made my stomach hurt. <laughs> Vox guitars rock. Dylan and Leslie, do your cars have a rear window defroster? Yes. Mine One mine car. Is dirt. One car, not the other car. It does. The van? Mm -hmm. But we can't even see all the dumb things. How does it have a rear thing? It does. That's stupid. You just can't use it. If That's you pointless. open the curtains, you can see out of it. Not really. There's a bike rack. That's true. You cannot drive. No, that's true. Like that. But we also have a many windows in the van that have paint over them because it's not how it was originally intended. You know, we have a b-class motorhome and so it's a ram promaster chassis and so it's a full window ram promaster chassis but because they put stuff in there you can't see out of all the windows and she's right you can't really see out of the back windows but it does have a rear window depression. i didn't know that mm -hmm. you have to drive with mirrors yep um they have defrosters charles wallace says i would never find another pickup guy just saying Thanks. If you died. If I died. If you was dead. I have not. Yes. Don't. I have, I have not. Yes. Just uh, Tom F. said, sweet. I made the off topic. Made it from SeaWorld. Like what? you're watching us from SeaWorld? Dang. I didn't know SeaWorld was still a thing. Yeah, what do they do, do they there if they're not allowed to do now? anything? Yes. Went Kill two, three years ago. Three years ago. Mel Santiago, name each of your top three movie directors. Uh, I don't know if I have three. I don't know. John Woo. No, I'm just kidding. Who? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. You know what's funny? I don't. So I really like um, Chris. Uh, I can't think of him. I, I don't well, name a movie. We could look it up. Yours would be Tim Burton. Mine would be. Yours might be. So you like Tim Burton. Um. And I don't like everything from everybody because the first person I thought of was the Shyamalan, whatever his name. Shyamalan is. Ding Dong or whatever his I name can't is. Watch yeah. all his movies because they're some of them are really dark. Uh, well, I'll, so I'll tell you one the in particular, down. one in particular that I really like, and it's totally obscure in the sense that you might not think of a bunch of movies that he's done, but Paul Greengrass. And the reason you know who he is, is because he did the second, not all of them, just the second Bourne movie. I am a filmmaker. I have grown up with a filmmaker. My dad, we've, I've been running a camera since I was a little kid. I love, I love three born movies. Um, I love examining movies with this lens. Ha ha ha. Um, but Paul Greengrass, 
uh, one of the things, one of his methods is that there's never a static shot in the entire film. So the, the camera is always moving. And I really like that style. Oh, you like Coen Brothers? I do love the Coen Brothers. Yeah. Very much. Um, you said they still have orcas, six of them. Yeah, I still, I, I do love the Coen Brothers. Um, Spielberg, yeah. Who else? Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, yeah. I mean, that's relatively newer though, right? He yeah. did a movie here. We're supposed to love him, right? I think I he think I like things where I'm looking at the cinematic quality of the movie and the style of it more than I am looking at like the like the Coen Brothers have a style, but it's more about the entire thing, like the the writing and the and the screenplay and the everything. I mean, um, I want to be like Disney, <clears throat> Pixar. I don't know who directs um, those. A lot of different guy. people. A lot of different people. Eli. I don't like uh, who's the J. I don't like. I'm not a James Cameron fan. I just think they're too is big that the market. Jurassic guy? No. What is he? He no. It's um. Avatar. James Cameron is Avatar. Yes, I did know that. Michael Bay is Transformers. You know, like there are the, the like to me those are like the Walmart and Target movies. Like I like more niche stuff. Well, they are. They're, they're like the big market. But Dark Knight, uh, Chris, um, whatever his name is, the Dark Knight is fantastic. Um, I love his directing. That was a yeah. so, hard question. I do have specific things. When we watch a movie, if you ever to watch a movie with me, I would tell you, this is what I like about this movie and this is what I don't, and I'll tell you why. I do not like this and angle. And don't let the shots be mixed up or out of place because he will not <sighs> uh -huh. like it at all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bad one for seeing yeah. continuity you, If you filmed errors. on day two and you put your makeup on wrong, like, <laughs> he's going to know. Yep. <laughs> that is true. Box Guitars Rock said T Titanic gave me this weird sinking feeling. Oh, for sure. It's because Sarge brought up Titanic. Yeah, I don't know I don't who like... did that. I like Titanic. It was at an impressionable time in my life. And I cried through the whole movie. The whole movie? The whole movie. Because we just studied um, symbolism in literature. So then as I'm watching this movie, like everything was a symbol to me. And I'm literally like bawling through the whole movie. It was quite embarrassing. No. I was like, this is the longest ass movie ever. I did that where the red phone came. That's a sad movie. My parents had that movie on like the two pack VHS for yeah, I've they probably the still have it. One time when I had to in school and that was it. You're talking about where the red phone grows. I'm still talking about Titanic. Oh yeah. Oh. Titanic came in a box set. Like it was that long. Everything came in a box set back then. Couldn't though. put it on a VHS. Could have put it on a VH. One. That's right. It was like four hours long. It was long. It was long. I forgot about that. Probably ate a lot of popcorn through that movie. Since we usually finish Ooh. the popcorn before, before the, the movie, movie starts. starts. Yeah. Oh. Now I want popcorn. I have popcorn. We might have to have popcorn afterwards. And watch a movie. No. I'm not staying up that late. No. You can. No, I'll watch a movie. You can. With your head. Did you room. see it? I don't watch a movie. <laughs> um, Jason Albert said, what about Hal Needham, the director of Smokey and the Bandit? You're he going, my dog's name you're going too far back. You're going too far back for me on that. And some of that stuff. Okay, go. Super chat from Sarge978. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you for the super <laughs> chat. All right. He said Cameron did Titanic. Yeah, that's Christopher what I Nolan is who Dylan is thinking of. Yes. If you had a dream opportunity to record with any producer, who would you choose? Rick Rubin. End of story. His podcast is fantastic. I don't even know if he's doing it anymore. Maybe Rick I'm unsubscribed. Rubin. I don't know. Um, End of story. Mel Santiago says theirs is Tarantino, Nolan, and Fincher. Oh, yeah. Fox Guitars Rock said, what's everybody's favorite movie? 
Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I don't what? know if I have a favorite movie. What did you say? A Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Slower. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Maybe she's okay. never heard of that, apparently. Not. Oh, man. It's a fantastic movie. I don't know if I have a favorite movie. No. Batman Dark Knight. That that movie is... Do you have a favorite movie, Brianna? Is, is incredible. No. She has a lot of favorite movies. Yep. She knows them all by heart, too. <laughs> she can, like, quote every friggin' movie ever made that she's ever seen. We need to watch um, Inside Out again soon because the, oh, yeah, the, the second one. one's coming out and I would totally go to the theater to see that. Well, yeah, cause I'm Wait, is, is that the one with the uh, emotions or mm -hmm. little people or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emotions are little people. Or, well, you That's know a great I, description, actually. You know what I mean. Yeah. I saw a meme that made me think of Brianna today. I can't oh, mentally God, handle what? that. It said somebody was telling her. I really like your personality. And she said, thanks. I have six more. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's awesome. What just dripped on my foot? You? No, I don't know. Probably. No, there's no. That is weird. <laughs> that was a big drop, too. Did you spit on her? No. I mean, you sneezed. You gopped on me. Gopped on Maybe. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's part of having a cold. I really wish Tom I could F get says rid of Blazing it. Saddles. I think that's my dad's favorite movie. Yeah. You're you're stepping way back there. Dog Dr. Tim says Princess Bride is also a blast. Oh, he's he first said Amadeus or Excalibur. Ooh. Every time I hear about that movie, I'm just like Amadeus. Same. Amadeus. <laughs> Same. Yeah. For, when I was little, I thought it said I'm a dance, and I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, push a button. I did. Oh, my bad. Super chat from Sarge978. Thank you for the super chat, Sarge. He said the visual aspect, color temp treatments, treatments, etc., of House of Flying Daggers made that movie incredible. Hmm. Like they did with Wizard of Oz. <clears throat> Benny's World said, if you like Inside Out, there's also that Ryan Reynolds imaginary friends one that looks interesting. I haven't heard of oh, that. Oh, I have. So color treatments. It's called If. Let's talk about color treatment for a second. If you want to talk about color treatment, just based on that, I love Jerry Bruckheimer. If you, if you watch Con Air or you watch The Rock... And you think about that warm sort of filter that he, like that LUT, whatever LUT he uses. Con Air, Nicolas Cage movie? Yeah. And so was The Rock. Um, I don't know what that is. I thought you meant like Dwayne The Rock. No, no, no. I no, did no, too. No, 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 no. Whatever LUT they used on, on whatever LUT he uses on those movies, the... There's just this warmth to it and a different color treatment and a tint to it that, I, that over the entire movie that I, I just love when Jerry Bruckheimer does I that. think we're getting movie quotes now and I don't get it. <laughs> I love it. Push the button. <laughs> um, super chat from Sarge978. We never get his jokes, but thanks for the super chat. He says, also, your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. I don't know what movie that's from. I know that's a movie quote, though. Okay. Well, they keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. So then we have uh, Rottweiler. No, go away, or I shall taunt you a second time. Oh. Um, yeah. It's Victoria G. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. You wish you could work it like I do, but oh you can't. God. Because there's only one David Ruffin, and without him, Temptations ain't nothing but a group in search of. Wow. Greg the Walrus said it was hilarious when you coughed on Brianna. He already got me sick, so. Um, in Fahrenheit 451, the main actor, Oscar Werner, cut his hair for the final scenes because he hated the director, broke the continuity. I love that book. It's very nerdy. That is a good book. Um, what do you think about The Green Mile? What do I think about it? Um... It's sad that the big black dude's dead. <laughs> oh, my God. What's his name? That guy? 
What? Oh, the huge, like he's a giant, like for real. He's like oh, seven foot yeah, yeah, huge yeah, yeah, guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But he died. Yeah, you're right. Why, well, you like that movie? I love that movie, That's... but I cry. I mean, I've watched it many, many times, so I do like it, I guess. Um, Bryson likes that movie. Oh, they're quoting Monty Python. That's why I don't yeah. get it. Bryson would have. Yeah. So Leslie's not, uh, she doesn't like, she doesn't have humor. Like this, the same way that other people have humor. Like when funny stuff is funny, she doesn't think it's funny. That's so dumb. So like when uh, a movie like a Monty Python movie, which I think Monty Python movies are kind of dumb too, so I'm not really into them. But um, what's the one with the clapping coconuts with the horse? That was a funny movie. Um, Isn't that the same movie? It is, but it's... it's um, there's a bunch of Monty Python movies, but that's the one I think of. Um, so if you were to watch like Robin Hood, Men in Tights, she would think that's dumb. If you were to watch, um, she hates Princess Bride, which makes no sense to me because that movie is hilarious. But I loved Into the Woods and that was really corny. Dad hated that movie. I love that movie. That movie was so stupid. I loved that movie. There it's, was sing- on, it's a musical. It's a musical for there real. There was singing in it. That's why. <laughs> so you don't like Grease? No. You don't like any singing no. movie? No. I knew that. Singing is for music. But I love musicals. I've watched every musical that is available in a free environment. I know. Netflix and everything. I, know. I love them. And the thing is... Is that I would go to a play, obviously. I've been to plays with you, and I will go see it. But I musicals are stupid. <laughs> I disagree. I, I think it's because I got ruined as a child with period. Music Man. Oh, sorry. Oh, period. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Anything that happened to me as a child, I just don't want to do it as an adult. That's basically it. I'm like over it. Mm. That yeah. would be the time for your better help. Yeah, Thanks. betterhelp.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. Sponsor. <clears throat> he says you're going to hate the Joker too then. Why? Joker was there's good. That was good. It's a musical? Uh, you're going to hate it. Uh, probably. I'm probably. I'm probably going to like musical. it. Holy shit. Um, I didn't need that dough. <laughs> hopefully it didn't break. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be crooked. <laughs> it's crooked. Um, Dog Doctor Tim says, "I love the Green Mile." Shawshank Redemption. That's the one I like. Yeah, yes. that's I like a good that movie. one. That's good. Movie. She doesn't have humor. Yeah, thanks. She's broken. You do have. I'm humor. broken. Wow. <laughs> this just gets better and better. We're both broken, just in different ways. You just told everybody I have multiple personalities. Am I wrong? That's not the point. Do you have humor? Sometimes. Not right now. <laughs> no, not right now. <laughs> oh. I don't know. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's World said, yes, the new one. It's going to be half musical with Lady Gaga as Harlequin. Yeah, I heard that. I think that sounds fantastic. That might be cool. My toe hurts, man. Sorry. Here, have some. <laughs> if you drink more tequila, you won't feel your toe. Mm-mm. Yeah, but I need to feel my toes. I already can't stand up straight. Oh my goodness. We don't. We haven't. It's funny. We haven't actually really gone down the whole movie thing on the pod on the live stream. I don't think about stuff like. I never watch anything. I don't. Yeah, we don't really watch. I don't that think many I've watched anymore. anything since we moved here. That's not true. What have I watched? I made you watch a movie with me. You hated it, but oh. I made you watch it with me. I didn't hate it. I told her I would never watch it again, and she was offended. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because I was all excited. I was like, what do you think? She's like, I would not watch that again. But she did the no scrunch, so that meant I hated it. I didn't, no, I didn't hate it. I just that no scrunch. wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't really watch a lot of television. I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube. But it's usually background stuff to just get my brain to yeah. shut off. I mean, we know all the documentaries, all oh, the cults. Yeah. Oh, yep. We got all those nailed. Yep. Yep. All the, all the sketchy religions. 
all the cult those are cult doc yeah all the cult yeah, documentaries no, like, all of the conspiracy documentaries dog doctor tim said what's the problem with multiple personalities there are seven days in a week tell her that <clears throat> you're the one that refers to yourself as we <laughs> All the time. I tried to blame the dog. That stopped working. Yeah. You don't always have the dog, though. Wow. Vox Guitars Rock says, I don't have multiple personalities, and neither do I. Exactly. I hope y'all don't watch The View. What is The View? I think that's a daytime talk show. Oh, I don't watch anything in daytime. No. Curtis Chavez says Brianna is cut off. She had a been sip. Drinking. She had a sip. This is her normal. Yeah, this is her. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing all. This is normal. Yeah, this is normal. Absolutely normal. It's the red dye 40 you gave me. That was a long time ago. <laughs> nice try. Not even. Con- I hit the button. Uh, Sarge978, thank you for the super chat. He said clerks and the rest of the clerks universe. Oh, yeah. What is that? I'm not a clerks guy. I feel like that was before my time. Yeah. What's the movie you watch with Ice T? With uh Ice Cube. One ice of the Cube? cubes. One of the ices. Friday? <laughs> huh? Friday. Well, Friday. Yeah. <clears throat> Friday. It's very clerksy. That that kind of I like Friday. I like yeah. Friday. Yes, Charles, that's what I used to always say. Like if you talk to yourself, it's because you need expert advice. That's right. Mm-hmm. Boo. Boo. He doesn't like that you're not a clerk's person. I thought he was from Booing Friday. Mm. Oh, he could be. If we ever get Brianna together with my daughter, we will need bail money. Nuh-uh. I ain't going to jail. Yeah. No. She. she they would leave me there. She's finally learned how to say no. It's taken me years, but she knows how to <laughs> say no now. Yeah. Yep. Shay and Silent there. Bob. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. Exactly. Have you seen those memes too? Like, I want to be Felicia. She's always going somewhere. That's right. Did you know that was from Friday? Mm-hmm. Oh, he was booing Friday. Rude. I mean, maybe you got to be from the South or have some thug friends or something. Uh, funny. Maybe. <laughs> You are my mom. I mean, yeah. If you ain't sat on a porch talking about everybody, I don't know what you're doing. That's right. That's all there is to do. Oh, here. he was. He said he was booing Dylan's clerk opinion. Sergeant, I just can't connect. Oh, okay. We're like always in a different place. Yeah. I was watching earlier in my room when he said he was shipping us something. I was like, oh shit, we don't have a tank. Yeah. Oh, is this a snake? He said, no. not the noodle. Not the noodle. I did hear not the noodle. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I'm about out of voice. You might like the What Happened to Monday movie by Tommy Ricola Isn't from that 2017. A kidnapping movie? Mm-mm, I don't know. I think it is. I watched a trailer and. <laughs> Not in your face, it. man. It's your face. Does anyone remember the Wax Works movie? Mm hmm. What is that? I don't remember it. I remember it, but I don't remember anything. If it has anything to do like a wax museum or dolls, I'm out. It sounds like a horror movie with like a wax museum. Oh, yeah. So if you bring up anything about dolls or anything about anything, puppets, anything like that, she's not having it. Me either, though. I don't care about this. I don't want to deal with that stuff. Dog Dr. Tim says, Dylan, are you familiar with Sen Cut Knives? Yes. Very much. Um, they are... You have one. I have a what? Send cut. That one I just gave you. Um, they, they They are um, a Civivi it's brand. It's in here. It's him. We Civivi Send Cut. Send Cut is the lowest. And they're really good. They come really good edges. She's got... Well, I just gave her one and it's... Um, the pretty one? With the Damascus blade. Mm-hmm. And it's sharp as crap right out of the box. I didn't have to put an edge on it or anything. It's really nice. Um, I use that one every day. Mm-hmm. Chris Thompson said, "Do you like magical martial arts movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Kung Fu Panda?" You know, um, 
for the purpose of the art of it, yes, but I'm not going to like choose it to watch. Um, That's one Asian thing I don't like is movies. Asian movies in general. Yeah. I don't that, know why. I don't, I, I'm like not. Oh That's not God. really an Asian movie. <laughs> That's really funny though. Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh my God. <laughs> I do, not, I do not know these people <laughs> that right is a now. racist movie it is bad anyway it's hilarious though yeah i'm not a i don't really get into that stuff so much i people keep telling me i need to watch this new thing yeah i think quite a few people are whatever that show is, is shogun about to say? yeah yeah but i I'm, i haven't watched it yet we used oh. to have a restaurant in augusta called shogun uh-huh no we have one now i want you I'm hungry. <laughs> well, I can't get Japanese food at ten o'clock, but I definitely would. We can uh, get popcorn. That's not gonna. That's not. I know. Nutritious. On how much you eat. No, it's not. Um, House of Flying Daggers is in that vein and definitely yeah. worth watching if you're into cinematography. Yeah, no, it's true. There, some of that stuff is really good. I just, um, I think. I used to really like a lot of different stuff. And then as movies got better, some of the older movies I watch now and I'm just like, I can't watch it anymore because the production value is so low. Like in comparison to what we can have now. On the other hand, if it's too much um, special effects and stuff, then I don't want to see it either. So like... I'll give you an example. Um, the Italian Job. That movie was fantastic. The remake with um, Mark Wahlberg was fantastic because there was no special effects in it. Like, I like that kind of stuff where it's like all really done, you know. Rottweiler says, I hate it when my wife wants me to pick a movie. Last time she left the room when I picked Spinal Tap. Oh, my God. I've never That's heard of funny. that, but just the name. Mr. No, Goat said you would think it's funny. A yeah. wax museum musical. Absolutely not. A wax no, museum I would puppet not. show music mm -hmm. musical. Nope. I wouldn't do it. Even if With I love it. Chucky as the host. Oof. That um, actually could be funny. Nope. Nope. Just wouldn't watch that musical. <laughs> F. Stathio says about a year or so ago, I tried to re rewatch the Knight Rider series and my eyes started bleeding from how bad it really is. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that's an extreme example, but that's the, my point is that some of that stuff is, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a movie you should try to watch. Go try to watch any of the Death Wish movies. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I was like, the Death Wish movies were amazing. They would come on at like WB on Saturday, and it was like, like the only time you could watch like a shoot 'em up movie was like on. WB on Saturday. It was so awesome. I try to watch it now and I'm just like, Charles Bronson not only is the ugliest man alive. I don't even know if he's alive. Probably not. But also the worst actor. The mu the music was terrible. The Everything was terrible. Like they're just terrible. But that's what they were then. Like Sarge978 says, you like Christopher Nolan, but don't like special effects. Um. Yeah, but... I'm not saying I don't like special effects. I'm saying that I do appreciate movies that, that don't have them. Um, but Christopher Nolan definitely has a lot of them. Yeah, for sure. That's all I got. I'm not saying that, Steve Rezzer. That sounds like a setup. We're calling it? Yep. I think we're calling it. I'm worn out. Yeah. Save your voice. Yeah. See y'all. Thanks, this was guys. Fun. I mean, we almost went two whole hours. Yeah, this was lot. great. We'll see y'all probably tomorrow. <laughs>